I'm Dennis Warwood, USU Extension in Emory County, and today we're talking about uh, wide row gardening and also a system of gardening that keeps the ground covered and useful. I view the garden space as kind of a giant solar collector, and my purpose is to convert sunlight into food, and to do that, I need to keep the ground covered so that my solar collector is busy. Another advantage of doing that is that uh, weeds have less of a chance to pop through. In any irrigated or, or rainy situation that I know of, if you have bare soil, it's an invitation for something to grow, and so I like to keep things growing. So my, uh, my intention in planting this garden is to cover every square inch with something that's uh, green and useful to me. So here in front of me, we have uh, a planting of uh, cabbage and cauliflower flower and broccoli that was made about two weeks ago. They were transplanted in. Prior to these plants being here, this area was the garlic patch. And once the garlic was big enough to be harvested in early July, then we worked the soil up and planted um, these uh, coal crops here that we intend to harvest probably in late September. I've done the same thing with peas here in central Utah, planted peas in April, harvested in June and July, tilled the peas under, planted again immediately, and harvested peas again in September and early October, and done the same thing as well with beets, with carrots, and with some of the other cool season crops like lettuce and spinach. I found that even in our relatively short growing season uh, that we can actually mature two crops. And so in this system what I want to do is plant things so that uh, with the idea that I'm going to keep the weeds suppressed while the plants are small but once the plants are large enough I want them to be completely covering the surface of the ground and then I have less uh, prob problem with weeds. So in the background you can see there's some onions. They're not a terribly competitive crop, but they're planted in a way that pretty much utilizes all of the space there. Uh, we have a row of uh, squash and, and pumpkins. Again, uh, they're, they're getting a little bit unruly this time of year, but I want to have the ground completely covered. The next row over, we have some of the uh, traditional cool season crops, uh, carrots, beets, onions, Swiss chard, kale, broccoli. Uh, down on the far end there's some uh, soybeans. Again, they were planted uh, with the rows fairly close. For example, the beets, those beet rows go across the, the width of the bed and were probably six inches apart. And once the beet plants got up, uh, they were able to cover the ground completely and the next row over is potatoes that are getting ready to harvest. Uh, and again, there's three rows there and planted in a way that they pretty much covered the ground. And so in, in my planting, I want to uh, try to cover the ground as much as I can with useful vegetation. And even on bare ground, once I've weeded an area, you notice the mulch that's among these uh, cabbage and broccoli plants. I will typically cover it with some type of a mulch like straw or in this case grass clippings to try to conserve moisture and keep the weeds down. But uh, think about that in your garden. Uh, you can rotate crops and even if uh, say with, in a place like the onions where that's going to be harvested a little later probably not give me enough time to plant another vegetable crop. What will happen here is I will harvest these onions in in probably within the next uh, three weeks. And then I will plant a cover crop like buckwheat or fall grain or canola or something like that, get as much growth out of it as I can, and then till it under to help improve the soil. So think about keeping your garden uh, plot busy, thinking of, think about uh, keeping it covered with useful vegetation.